This is the first video in the build series on making the solar electric powered pontoon boat. Here is the first one I played around with just using a couple of kayaks and some PVC panels. Made a little platform and lashed it together. A little trolling motor and away you go. We found that the panel supports were too flimsy at this architecture level so we just charged the battery and used the pontoon boat for going up and down the rivers. Very stable, great platform, but wouldn't it be nice to have a real 16-foot patio boat? Not many for sale on Kauai, so let's make one. And here is a scale model. One inch equals one foot. The boat is currently planned on being 16 foot long by eight foot wide, and you can see the pontoons are gonna be very hydrodynamic. The roof's gonna be about seven foot tall, and we're hoping to have it be able to raise and lower so we can tow it easier and get it underneath bridges. This boat build is inspired by Jamie Mansell of YouTube fame. He has created a few solar boats out of fiberglass that are just amazing. This is his construction boat called the Shark Slicer that he created for moving construction materials around. It's large and can haul a lot of materials, can go about seven miles an hour. This one is his speedboat that he made out of fiberglass, just like the other one. And this one utilizes the ultra thin and lightweight flexible solar panels. The idea with this boat is to be able to go fast and get into town quicker. Here is a cardboard model of one of the pontoons we'll be building for our 16 foot patio boat. Each one of the bulkhead sections will be filled with recycled water bottles and expanding foam, and then sealed off to make sure that these pontoons are unsinkable. Our first step is to create the pontoons. They will be created in two 8-foot sections and then attached together. We will need two 30-inch wide by 8-foot long sheets of thin fiberglass. Here we are waxing the mold that we'll be using to create these sheets. Now we need to cut two 8-foot long pieces of fiberglass that are 30 inches wide. Then we mix up some resin, wet the mold, and lay down our sheet of fiberglass cloth. Another layer of resin incorporates all the fiberglass strands, and now it's time to let it sit and cure. After a few hours of curing, the material is strong enough to be removed from the mold. For our purposes of making the mold for the front hole, one layer of chop strand mat is the perfect combination of flexibility and strength. Made a second one doing the same technique, and here you can see the sheet has been flipped over to help the underside cure. You can see how flat and smooth the side that was against the form is, and that's the side that will be on the inside of the mold. So that will be the smooth and flush exterior of the pontoon. The rolls of fiberglass are heavy, so I built a stand to hold them. Next, it's time to build the bulkheads. I made them using thin plywood. These bulkheads will be used to spread the whole mold. We will set them in place using Gorilla Tape and then flip the whole mold over, adding layers of fiberglass to help it keep the shape. So to get started, we lay the two sheets out and we'll be using the Gorilla Tape all around the edges. Here you can see putting one of the bulkheads in, again using the Gorilla Tape to fasten it to the sheets that we've made. Once we got all the bulkheads in and flipped the mold over, we realized that the mold skin, only one sheet of fiberglass, was going to be too thin for the purposes as the form was going to be too wobbly. Here you can see we're going to get another sheet of fiberglass to go ahead and apply a second coat to our first mold sheets. Here's the first piece done with the second layer added. Once both are done, we'll go back to forming the hole again. Once the second sheet cured, I taped them together and cut the front to form the basic bow curve. Then I flipped it over on top of this board and spread the panels apart in order to form the basic pontoon shape. On went another layer of fiberglass and resin, and I've got some objects propped up inside to help it keep the form that we're looking for. I also utilized the various strips of fiberglass I had left over from other cuts to help reinforce the panels. Now I built some support braces and flipped the mold over onto them. I went ahead and slid open the end as we're going to be putting fiberglass all the way through. And I've sanded down the edges. The idea with the mold here is that we'll be putting our sheets of fiberglass through the very end of it. 
and then bringing the ends together with little clips to hold them, that way we'll get a very sharp and pointy front end of the boat. Remember to sand down any bumps and fill in any pits with an epoxy like Marintex as any of these features will be translated into the actual finished product. Here you can see how the hole seams will come together and we'll be using little binder clips to hold them all together once the fiberglass and resin has been applied. And now the bumps have been sanded, the pits have been filled, the mold has been thoroughly waxed and here you can see the PVC pipe separators that are notched to help hold the mold apart at the proper size. And so now that we've thoroughly waxed the mold, we're ready to go ahead and start applying the layers of fiberglass. In the front, the seams are held together by binder clips, and that way we can put fiberglass all the way through and then clip it together. It's going to give us a very sharp and pointy front end that will provide as much hydrodynamic efficiency we can get from this whole design. And that's what's important when you've got a solar electric powered boat. Getting ready to start with the layup, you can see the pieces of fiberglass are all cut and ready to go. And here we are halfway through with layers that have been resined and a new layer that's been applied. One of the challenges here is to get the material and the resin all the way down into the cracks. So I use both a roller brush and a paintbrush. Of course, different size sheets. And here's the roller tray. So back and forth with the roller brush to bring the resin up through all the layers and go back over it a second time to make sure it's got enough and keep on going all the way through to the end. And here you can see I've got pieces of PVC that are notched to make sure that the shape of the mold is the way I want it. Now it's time to let it cure. The end is clipped with the binder clips. A little excess material sticking out here there that'll all get sanded down in the final. And here is a separation tool I made out of a piece of PVC and I heated and crimped the end. It's a great tool because it is really good at getting between the material and the mold and the pole's long enough that I'm not going to get my hands down near those sharp edges. As it presses through the diameter of the pipe does a great job in separating the material and you can twist and turn and move it all around to help get those layers separated. Didn't put enough wax in this particular layup so there are a few areas of the mold that did not separate cleanly. As you can see, I'm going to need to do some sanding to remove those pieces, and I'll have to do some repair to the mold. No problem, can make it all better. Now it's time for a bit of trimming and sanding, and as we put the bulkheads in, it'll help to straighten out the shape of the pontoon. Now it's time to fix the mold, make another one of these pieces, and join them together to make the bottom part of our first pontoon.